Howdy partners, this is Kyle again. Today we're taking a look at a most dangerous game. A game that pits bounty hunters against nightmarish monsters. Kill the biggest, baddest ones, and you'll earn yourself a hefty reward. You must watch yourself out there, friend. Me and my posse ain't the sharing types. Welcome to Hunt Showdown. Let's start with the setting. It's the turn of the 1900s. That's the 20th century for you book-learning folk. The swamplands of Louisiana have been invaded by all manner of hellspawn. The undead walk the roads, hellhounds stalk the brush, and there are even creatures made of barbed wire and nightmares. Fortunately, you can handle all of that. You're a trained monster hunter from a great and powerful bloodline. You've got an entire arsenal of tools handcrafted to do away with the beasts that live in the shadows. With a couple of desperados at your side, there ain't much you can't handle. Rending claws, plague-ridden bugs, and even flaming meat hooks of death are little more than obstacles for you to overcome. It is your duty to put all of these demons to rest, and you will be paid handsomely for the effort. However, there is one little thing you really need to watch out for. Ooh, that looked like it hurt. With all of those creatures out there walking the land, you might be surprised to learn that the most dangerous thing to you is your fellow man. Nothing will put a stop to your hunt faster than a bullet burying itself into your thick skull. You only earn the bounty if you can kill the big bad and walk away with proof of the deed. Other folk will be obliged to let you do all the hard work and then rip that proof from your cold dead hands. Another hunter lost, another pine box to fill. Well, call the mortician and let's get ready to do it all over again. With the basics out of the way, let's take a more in-depth look at your role in all of this. You, the player, represents the hunters for an entire monster hunting organization called a bloodline. With every hunt, your bloodline will accumulate more points towards leveling up. Every time you gain a new level, you can gain new types of guns or equipment that can be brought into the field. Your hunters will also level up, but they will do so separately from your bloodline. We'll get to them in a moment. Your bloodline also likes to keep track of the weapons and equipment that you bring out into the field. If you consistently use a certain type of equipment or weapon, then your bloodline will earn points for that particular stuff. Earn enough of these points and you can unlock new variants of your favorite types of equipment. For example, the Winfeld Lever Action Rifle is a favorite among new and experienced hunters alike. Use it enough and you'll be able to unlock all kinds of variants of this gun. You have your basic Winfeld here. You can throw a silencer on that bad boy to make yourself a little more sneaky. Throw on a scope so you can hit targets at a long range. Cut this thing down into what they used to call a mare's leg fashion and suddenly it's lighter, easier to carry so you can carry more other weapons as well. You like that small one, but you want to stick a buzzsaw and a bayonet onto the end? Be my guest. This kind of progression has been around for ages and isn't something that the player needs to actively manage. The simple act of playing the game will slowly but surely level up your bloodline and you're bound to unlock new toys sooner or later. It's especially nice because none of these awards can be taken away from you. That being said, there are some things in this game that are a lot less permanent. Let's talk about your hunters now, shall we? Hunters will all flock to your recruitment screen packing their own heat, equipment, and traits. Weapons are the least important thing to consider when thinking about which hunters you'd like to hire, as you can simply hop on over to the shop and buy them new guns to bring out into the field. The same thing applies to whatever equipment they may have. You'll also notice the red rectangles down beneath the hunter's name. That's actually the hunter's health bar, and while it does come in a variety of shapes and sizes, every hunter does have the exact same maximum health. The different sized rectangles are more resistant to different damaging effects that can be placed on your hunter throughout a game. However, there will be very few instances where your decision will really be swayed by the type of health bar that a hunter has in the hunter select screen. In my opinion, I really saved the best for last here, because the most important thing about the hunter select screen is the trait pool that your characters come with. Traits are game-changing passive abilities that your hunters can get throughout their journey. They can influence how fast your character moves through difficult terrain, how resistant they are to specific types of damage, and even the playstyle that they're best suited for with different types of weaponry. As hunters level up, they'll earn trait points, which can be spent to give them additional traits. This will allow for a level of customization to ensure that your hunters are best suited to use your favorite types of firepower, and of course, play your favorite playstyle. It's for that very reason that you want to keep a close eye on the traits that hunters start with. Any points that you can save moving forward by hiring on a hunter that already has some of your favorite abilities will certainly help you in the first round you bring them in. For example, one of my favorite perks in the game right now is the levering perk. Faster fire rate from the hip when using the lever action rifle. That might not sound like a whole lot, 
but when you consider that the Winfeld lever action rifle for this example shoots consistently, but with a fairly slow full-on fire rate because of the need to move the lever, well, let me just show you an example of how powerful levering can be in the right hands. Okay. Down two. Wow, dude! Alright! At this point, I think I know what you're thinking. All of these weapons and perks and equipment, they're nice and all, but why not just spend the money, get the strongest hunter you can, get the best possible loadout, and then just go ham from there? Why is there even money in a game if you can just do that? Well, I'll tell ya. If your hunter dies on the field, they are gone from the game for good. That fancy little weapon you bought, gone. That expensive set of matched pair of pistols, gone. All of that equipment is gone. All of the perk points you've spent to get your hunter where they are today, gone. As such, it can be a real punishing game. However, there are a few nice things that the game does for you to offset this kind of punishment. Earning money isn't particularly hard to do in this game, with a multitude of options to do so. You can of course also abandon a mission early in order to save your hunter's life, if you're afraid of what's to come. And finally, there is always going to be a free hunter on your recruitment tab. So even if you somehow manage to lose every cent you own, you can rest easy knowing that you still have the opportunity to climb your way back to the top using nothing but these free drunken hillbillies. That's enough prep work, it's time to test your mettle in the hunt. Each hunt follows a few simple steps. Step 1. You and your teammates need to scour the map for clues that will lead you to the big bad demons with the bounties placed on them. By holding down the E key, you can go into your hunter's sight. These big blue glowing auras are clues. Each clue collected grays out a portion of the map like a moonshiner's eyes. That means that the target ain't gonna be over there, so keep up the search. If you don't accidentally stumble onto the beast's lair as you bumble around the map, then you'll need to collect three clues in total to be directed to the big bad demon. Step 2. Once you've found the demon, it's time to fight it. This is where the excitement really kicks off. There are currently four types of boss monsters in the game. Each has their own strengths, weaknesses, and ability. But, as a general rule, it will take a lot of bullets to put them down. Be sure to watch your back, as other hunters will likely be attracted to the sound of gunfire, and they'd love to shoot you in the back while you focus on the boss battle. If you make it to step 3, then it's time to banish the beast back to the pits of hell. Once you've killed the monster, you really only done half the job. Now you have to perform a ritual known as banishing. This is almost guaranteed to be a party as when the banishing starts, all rival players are notified that it's happening and the hunter's sight will reveal massive blue lightning bolts to guide everyone right to your front door. The banishing ritual also takes a couple of minutes to complete. Survive the onslaught of any players who want to come steal the bounty from you, and then, step four, escape with your life. Once the creature is banished, it will spawn two bounty tokens on its corpse. Grab them and get ready to move fast. The lightning bolts will continue to direct rival hunters right to you. Look at the map, spot an exit point, and get the hell out of there before a rival hunter can put a bullet in your brain and steal all of your hard work. If you can make it through all of that, then you'll be paid, not only for your clues, but you'll also earn a big reward for turning in the boss's ugly mug. Your hunter gets to live another day, and both they and your bloodline will earn a hefty amount of experience points. While your objective may be simple, accomplishing it is anything but. There's always the risk of enemy players finding you at the worst of times. Boss monsters demand your attention or else they'll slaughter you, and even smaller monsters can catch you by surprise. So, here's a few tips and tricks to help you newer hunters survive in the bayou. All sorts of monsters stalk the roads, buildings, and swamps. Killing them doesn't earn you any money, but sometimes they're just in the way. Killing them with gunfire can alert rival hunters to your position before you're ready for a proper scrap. I recommend bringing a melee weapon or silent gun to help you deal with these beasts nice and quiet like. Don't shoot the immolator. Going down in a hunt isn't the end. Your hunter isn't technically dead until your entire team falls. If you're downed, then your partners can take as much time as they need to mosey on over to your sorry hide and drag you kicking and screaming back to the world of the living. There is one exception. Fire bad. If someone throws a firebomb or lamp on your unconscious self, then you'll start burning away until there's nothing left. This kicks off a timer. If your friends like you enough, then they may try to fight off whoever took you down so that they can revive you before it's too late, but that opens up the door for rivals to hide around your body and ambush your teammate. Be the ambusher, not the ambushed, friend. Do not shoot the immolator. You should also take the time to loot around whenever possible. You can find objects that will grant you money, first aid, some extra cash, experience points, or sometimes even free perks. Remember to loot the corpses of your rival hunters. That will almost always net you some items and hunt dollars. 
But be warned, if you followed my tip about burning a rival's body, then they cannot be looted without the aid of a specific perk. Every monster has specific strengths and weaknesses. While most are easy to put down, some can be serious threats if left unattended. I'm not going to go over every single beast and their weaknesses because that would take forever. Be sure to experiment with different strategies against all creatures including boss monsters to find their weaknesses. Don't shoot the immolator! Here's the most important tip I can give you. I really did save the best for last. Every weapon has an effective range. That doesn't refer to some exotic mathematical equation relating to bullet drop-off, no. It's simply the range at which that weapon will kill a rival hunter with a single shot to the head. That's right, headshots are king in this game, and all of your fancy health bars won't count for spit if you take a bullet to the brain. Bullets already do a ton of damage in this game, but landing that single perfect headshot can turn the tide of a losing battle. It is the Great Equalizer. Your rivals could spend thousands of dollars on the best hunters and weapons in the game, but if you play smart and shoot true, then you have a guarantee. If you have a trusty dusty six-shooter, you're still a threat to even the most well-equipped hunter. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a quick guide to Hunt Showdown and what makes it such a unique title. It goes without saying that it's a visual masterpiece, blending a dusty western aesthetic with some of the most creative hell beasts I've seen in recent memory. It has satisfying gunplay, a mix of slow and methodical tracking combined with high-octane gunfights. It brings forth a distinct experience that you'll not find in any other kind of shooter. It's all for these reasons that I give this game an A rank. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'd like to send out an extra huge shout out to everyone who watched my previous review on MechWarrior 5 and took the time to comment on it. I think I got some good feedback from a few people, and honestly, I'm just glad to be making some kind of content that people can enjoy in some small way. I hope you look forward to the content that I still have coming out. I did hint at creating a much larger, more expansive video for MechWarrior 5, but that universe and the game itself are absolutely huge, so that undertaken is uh, it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. It'll be a while before that comes out, but I am working on it. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy other videos I'm going to be making, any kind of lighter content I can do to just keep the creativity flowing. There's so many projects that I have in mind that I want to do, but you know, there's only so many hours in the day. So everything will, at this point, take however long it takes. It's still my goal to improve after every video I make, so if you wouldn't mind taking the time to comment below and tell me about the things you liked about this video, and of course, especially the things you didn't, so I can work on improving my videos in the future, I'd really appreciate it. But that's all for now. Thank you all again. Have a good one.